What's going on everybody C4 welcome back to the channel and today we're kind of going with a hypothetical rebuild here just a little bit amongst recent news the big news it's late in the football offseason here we're kind of grasping at straws but things are currently heating up surrounding the New England Patriots first little bit of news which was a rumor which is yet to be confirmed or denied which I think is interesting and that is the rumor that Aaron Rodgers turned down a trade to the New England Patriots in favor of the New York Jets, which is very, very interesting because throughout this offseason, there's been lots of news around the Patriots not being sold on Mac Jones and looking to improve the quarterback room. And you also currently have DeAndre Hopkins, who the Patriots are the favorites right now to land the services of like really the last big free agent that I, I think is going to be a needle mover at this point. I mean, there could also be some trades uh, closer to the regular season. You know, right now, like Buda Baker is a popular name from the Arizona Cardinals. They're pretty much in a fire sale mode. But DeAndre Hopkins visited the Patriots and the Titans, and it looks like he's currently leaning towards the Patriots. So I decided, why not combine both of these scenarios and just see what we can do in a two-year window. You know, you might notice Aaron Rodgers' age. I knocked him down to 31. I've tried this three times, and he's retired the first offseason every single time. So what we are going to do to keep it fair is if you look at Aaron Rodgers' current contract, it's just, he's, he pretty much has two years left. He has this year, 2023, with the Jets. He's pretty much going to play till he's 41. So what I'm thinking is just for simplicity's sake in this rebuild, it's going to be two years. Maybe we'll stretch it three so that hypothetically Aaron Rodgers at 42. That will be our cap for him to try and win a Super Bowl here with the New England Patriots. We'll go two seasons. Maybe we'll go three if we're very, very close. But at least two minimum. Ignore the number 14 jersey. We're just rocking and rolling here. I don't have time to mess around with jersey numbers in this hypothetical situation. But we get Aaron Rodgers, an absolute gunslinger. I think that would have been crazy, Aaron Rodgers with Bill Belichick. Uh, but the combo of Aaron Rodgers and DeAndre Hopkins, basically we're going to see, is that enough for this to be a needle mover? And we probably could revisit this trade if DeAndre Hopkins officially does sign with the New England Patriots and then run it back with a Mac Jones. And that's only more content that we have later in this Madden cycle, which is never a bad thing. So taking a look at the rest of the Patriots roster while we are here, we have done and acquired most of the players that they got in the 2023 NFL Draft and or free agency. We got Kayshawn Boutte, we got Mike Isecki, we got Juju Smith-Schuster. Um, on the defensive side of the football, we got Keon White, who was a hidden dev. We got Christian Gonzalez, which is a ridiculous pick. I think most Patriots fans should be very, very excited what he's going to be able to bring to that squad and hit the ground running. Um... I think that's probably it as far we got Mapu there, the linebacker, Sacramento State. Um, during the sim season, kind of sim to this point, Jones, Marcus Jones went up dev traits to a star dev, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, the other Jones here went up to a superstar, which is like, you know what, I'm not going to be getting rid of any of these ones. Matt Judon went to an X-Factor, which I think that's kind of legit for him to have an X-Factor anyways. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins got a superstar. Ramondre Stevenson went up to a star. Hunter Henry went up to a superstar. I didn't think any of these were too egregious for me to manually knock them back down a rating. Plus, given the fact that this is not going to be a full five-year rebuild, I was like, oh, wait, whatever. We'll take whatever dev traits we can get to try and get this thing over the line. So let's see what we can accomplish here. Year one of a New England Patriots rebuild if they signed DeAndre Hopkins and if they were able to trade for Aaron Rodgers massive shout out to DraftKings for sponsoring today's video and if you're anything like me your mind is already on the football season you can get in on the action right now with best ball over at my partners on DraftKings this year best ball on DraftKings has a 10 million dollar prize pool up for grabs sign up now using my promo code c4dfs and get your first 10 dollar entry fee back in dk dollars once the draft is finished. To start playing best ball, download the DraftKings app, sign up using promo code C4DFS, enter DraftKings best ball $10 million millionaire contest and draft your team for the season. Each week, you'll automatically rack up points from all your top scores. No ads, drops, trades, I should have played them, no worrying about the waiver wire. You'll be able to enjoy the fantasy football action without the need to manage your team. The team with the most points at the end of the season will take home the $1 million top prize. This is DraftKings' largest best ball contest ever. So what are you waiting for? Head to the DraftKings app and sign up with code C4DFS and start playing best ball today. Enter the DraftKings $10 million best ball contest and you'll get your first $10 entry back in DK dollars. Only on DraftKings with code C4DFS.
At the midway point of year one, pretty good. Sitting atop the AFC East with a 6-3 and three record. Very surprising. The Dolphins are 3-7. and seven. You know, if these trades went through, I, I think that you could make the argument the AFC East would be as competitive as any division in football with, really, the Bills and the Dolphins. Jets wouldn't have Aaron Rodgers in this scenario. But the Bills and Dolphins are also playoff caliber teams. So I'm very happy that we are 6-3 and three right now. Currently with a top 10 offense and borderline top 10 defense. Patriots are a solid sim team in Madden. Uh, look at our contracts. Guys that we want here for the remainder of this rebuild. However long it goes. Two years, three. We might go three, honestly. My plan is to go three. Uh, we have to make a decision here with the two tight ends. I'm not really utilizing. Like, I have Mike Gusecki right now in the slot just because, I honestly, he's like a receiver. He's more of a receiver than he is. And I almost feel like that's what the Patriots are going to do. Uh, Patriots do run two tight end sets historically, you know, with Aaron Hernandez and Rob Gronkowski. But if you ever watch Mike Gusecki play, he's, he's a wide receiver. It'd be classic Bill Belichick just to, like, officially move him to wide receiver and just, just kind of roll with it. But let's start here. We'll start with Kyle Duggar. Really good strong stage. Give him a five-year, $77 million deal. Lots of versatility there. We have Michael Wendy, one of the best guards in Madden, one of the highest ceiling guards in any Madden franchise mode. Uh, we have Trent Brown on the offensive line. We run our alignment into the ground, so we'll give him a two-year, $30 million deal. We still have $60 million bucks available. Uh, Juwan Bentley, even though there's no depth trait, 85 overall linebacker. Uh, you know, it's only years. He wants five years. We'll give him that easily. Uh, John the Jones at corner. I mean, we'll get him on a one-year deal. He's one of those guys that we let him walk. He likely would be the highest-rated free agent on the open market. We'll give Josh Uche a five-year deal. That's not the longest rebuild we can be. A little adventurous with our contracts that we're handing out because it's not like we're going to have to worry about the consequences of these contracts as if we were doing like a four, five, six-year rebuild or anything like that. So we have Mike Gusecki. I think we just got to pick. And I, I will go Hunter Henry. Mike Gusecki is only on a one-year deal. And we'll come back with Juwan Bentley and give him an extra year and get that contract across the line. And then our first season's a success. We're able to get a nice little tuck rule rematch here in the wild card round. Nine and eight Patriots going against Josh McDaniels and the 12 and five Vegas Raiders. That's a great matchup there. But we end up winning the AFC East. So immediate success for Aaron Rodgers and DeAndre Hopkins. Look at Aaron Rodgers. Not so much on the yards, but 39 touchdowns, nine picks. Still playing at an elite level. 1,200 yards, 15 touchdowns for Andre Stevenson. We had 1,000 yards, six tutties for DeAndre Hopkins. 9 and 9 for Hunter Henry. 9 and 12 for Juju Smith Schuster. 700 yards. Mike Gasecki. Defensively, Jawan Bentley Jones and Jabril Peppers all going over 100 tackles on the season. Eight and a half sacks from the rookie Keon White. Four and a half on 13 TFLs for Briarmore. 17 TFLs, four sacks for Judon. TFLs are fine. Sacks a little low. And those are the interception leaders. Got a couple turnovers there. Yearly awards MVP goes to Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles with Aaron Rodgers coming to number six in the MVP race. Looking at the individual awards, looking for some Patriots. Not much. Keon White, runner-up for Defensive Rookie of the Year. We have Aaron Rodgers, runner-up for Quarterback of the Year. Not too shabby for his first season in the AFC. And kind of closing it out. Not expecting really to have too much here. But we're able to make the playoffs, and this is a big playoff game. It's a big, big first. Let's let's hop in, play the moments here, and just see if we can get this one started with a little momentum. Big rivalry matchup, welcoming the Raiders to July. I don't know what was the first. Obviously, the first game had to be in New England, the, the iconic fumble tuck rule game, right? Because it was, was snowing like crazy. So a rematch to where it all started. Underrated rivalry. In the AFC, I think obviously as of late, the, the Raiders haven't really held up their end of that bargain, especially near the end of the Brady era. The Raiders just weren't really good to keep that rivalry going and it got surpassed by like the Colts and Peyton Manning. But uh, we'll remember it. We'll rekindle that flame. And it looks like we're playing pretty well here, all things considered. 21-13, big field goal. Nail it. Up 11, should be enough to see this one out. Garbage time score by Vegas. Too little, too late. And in his first year with the Patriots, Aaron Rodgers gets a playoff with neither. Yeah, I mean, both of our guys didn't play particularly well. DeAndre Hopkins didn't get a single catch. And Aaron Rodgers had a not great game. But that's kind of like the idea of this. It's like, you know what? Rodgers is getting up there in age. I'm expecting him to regress in this rebuild. It's more so the talent of Aaron Rodgers, the talent of DeAndre Hopkins out there, paired with the defensive mind of Bill Belichick and old school football of Bill Belichick. And today... First round of the playoffs, old school football won. Great defense, and Ramondre Stevenson pounded that rock. All right, we'll get back to Simmons here. Game two, we got Lamar Jackson in the 12-5 Baltimore Ravens. Pretty good team, 87 overall. 
I'm expecting a competitive game, but a game that we handle. Another low score, man. 21-17. And guess who we're playing? Super Bowl on the line. Surprise, surprise. The Kansas City Chiefs. And in an epic AFC Championship game, we fall. Uh, you know what? You just can't, you can't let Patrick Mahomes do that. You just... I said we're going potentially three years. Wasn't expected at all to work year one. The fact that we were two wins away from winning a Super Bowl, that's a pretty good start. I think meets the expectations of what I think anyone would have expected the Patriots to look like with DeAndre Hopkins and Aaron Rodgers. Let's move on to year two. Chiefs went on to be the 49ers in the Super Bowl. Shocking. Brock Purdy couldn't get that one done. Uh, looking at our dev traits, DeAndre Hopkins lost his superstar. Mike Gusecki gained an X-Factor. That's all the moving pieces on the offense. On the defensive side, Matt Judon lost his X-Factor. Regressed down to a superstar. Juwan Bentley goes from normal up to a star. Jabril Peppers goes from star to superstar. And Christian Gonzalez out the box from the draft class. Yes, Bengals, a massive Gonzalez fan. Gets an X-Factor, I'm not complaining. But all in the first wave of free agency, stealing away Christian Wilkins from the Miami Dolphins. He's going to be a great fit for our front three. And then we got Jedrick Wills, who's going to kick over to the right tackle spot and be, well, our cover at right tackle. So felt like what better time than now to cash in on Mac Jones and send him to a team that just loves Alabama players, able to get a second round pick in return from the Commanders. Going to the draft, we really only have... Yeah, not a lot of needs right now. I do think another wide receiver would be important. That's why I've kind of done my homework on the wideouts that are available. It doesn't look the best. Uh, usually the safe bet is, the, is the, the deep threats. A deep threat running here on Carlos Hardy. But he doesn't have the 4-2 speed that you like to see with a top tier deep threat player. Uh, which I almost, we might just have to go with the best stats with his Britton Kirkland. Clemson. I'm sure DeAndre Hopkins like playing with another Clemson player. Uh, you got three Bs and a C, 5'11", 197. Not really a great athlete. It's just, it's not a good, like, there's no other, there's no other positions. Literally, in terms of starters, you're like, like, another linebacker, another middle linebacker potentially would, like, be the only other option. And even if that's the case, like, someone like Devin Benson who has the double A and the B there, we can get him in the second round. Uh, no real first round linebacker that's screaming, come draft me. So I think we'll just go with the wide receiver that's probably not going to have elite speed, but I mean, should be decent. Three Bs and a C is pretty good. A let's at least roll a hidden dev trick. And with the pick that we got from Mac Jones, should go grab that linebacker. Honestly, left outside linebacker that's available here in Devin Benson. As long as the combine's not too bad, he's a Georgia Bulldog. A pursuit, A zone, B tackle. And he comes in with elite acceleration, agility, change of direction, doesn't really have the straight line speed that you would like to see, but that's why he's pretty much Nicobe Dean. Oh, no, Dev Trade kind of stinks. Finish the last of our premier picks with a center Sharif Staten. Pops in with a hidden Dev. Really undersized, 290. Jesus, Kelsey. And for our draft recap, Kirkland. Whoa, 78 hidden Dev Trait. That is an immediate upgrade at our wide receiver three spot. Uh, he's just solid. 83 catching, 92-92 for the speed acceleration, 84 short at running, 85 spec catch, 90 change of direction. This is a, He might be one of the better players from this whole draft class. Uh, Benson, 72, still not bad, even though there's no dev trait there. State in our center, 74 hidden dev. Got a couple other 70s, but I want to double check, man. That wide receiver might be the best player, pound for pound in the class. Or he's, well, at least he's tied with uh, Jaqueline Sharp running back. Uh, Pleasant, who actually I did scout that guy as well, Byron Pleasant. He was a second, third round D tackle. He was third. Could have had a even better draft class. Year two of our Patriots rebuild, and yeah, we're looking to run it back here. We've improved the offense, got the arguably best player in the draft at wide receiver to come in and be our third option here. Uh, we had Jedrick Wills to really complete the offensive line to keep Aaron Rodgers and company going. And on the defensive side, we're going to actually, you know what, we'll go with the upside of Keon White in case we do go. You know what, screw it, we'll say it right now. We're going three years. we got two more years to try and win a Super Bowl, which, I mean, after that, it's just fair to assume Aaron Rodgers in real life will be retiring. I can't see him playing more than three seasons with the Jets. So I think to be it fair, I don't think he's going to play more than three seasons in this scenario with the Patriots. Plus, DeAndre Hopkins is already starting to regress. 
So I think that gives them enough time. Like that's our window for this whole thing. If it was ever going to work out, it'd work out over the next two seasons. Uh, but the defense looks really, really good. Across the board, really good secondary. Uh, the addition of Christian Wilkins on the defensive line, I think is going to elevate everybody else in that front seven. So we were two wins away from a Super Bowl in year one. I think we go further as long as, you know, I'm not going to say as long as we don't have to play the Chiefs, but it'd be nice if we don't have to play the Chiefs in the playoffs this year. All right, it's a good time right now. It's not quite mid-season, but we are undefeated. So I like using this as a little bit of like a, gives you guys an idea where we're going here in year two. Uh, let's look at some contracts if we are, if we are going one more season. So let's try to make it all work on the contracts here. First up, DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, we got, if we only know that we only have one more year, I have no problem. Making sure we retain all these veterans, or at least try our best to. So we got Jonathan Jones, one-year deal. DeAndre Hopkins locked in. Matt Judon, give him a player-friendly contract. $18 million remaining. I think Ramondre Stevenson, you're probably not going to do a whole lot better than that on the open market. That is a very affordable contract for a nice underrated power back. We have David Andrews. He could be the one that we can move on from because I drafted a hidden dev center. Uh, let's see if we can get Barmore, who's still a solid player for us. We'll get Barmore locked in. And I'm looking like, you know, we're going to need a linebacker. And we're going to need... That's it. We're going to need a linebacker. We're getting younger at center. With, so with every salary cap that we get, hopefully we can get a linebacker in free agency. If not, that'll just be our top priority in the draft. Better than year two. Ooh, that is a very interesting wild card matchup. The Dolphins actually beat us for the AFC. Somehow on a tiebreaker as we're both tied at 11 and 6. We get to find out who truly is the best team in the first round of the playoffs. What I didn't expect is Mac Jones to be the leading passer in the NFL. Very interesting. Aaron Rodgers is at that age, right? You know, we're expecting him going into year 19. Probably have a little bit of regret. Still playing at a decent level, though. 4,600 yards, 33 touchdowns, 10 picks. 1,300 yards, 14 teddies for Andre Stevenson. DeAndre Hopkins had a very good season. 78 catches, 1,200 yards, 11 tutties. 1,008 for Hunter Henry. 1,009 for our rookie first-round pick, Britton Kirkland. Love seeing that. Juju was solid as well. On the defensive side, Jawan Bentley goes over 100 tackles. Matt Judon. We actually, we had, like, no pass rush. We throw Christian Wilkins in the mix, which those are awesome numbers for a nose tackle and a 3-4. And Uche gets 14 sacks, 70 and a half for Matt Judon. So, I mean, Christian Wilkins seems like the missing piece. Marcus Jones led the team with four interceptions, which is a great number. But, man, you got to – it's hard not to keep your eyes in the building when you see, you know, Mac Jones kind of have the year he did. But, look, he didn't even make the MVP race, so he was just maybe padding his stats a little bit as far as uh, the passing yards because I think well, he had 38 touchdowns, which is good, but not S tier. Uh, look at the award winners here. Kirkland, number three for Offensive Rookie of the Year. Um, wow, Aaron Rodgers getting slept on. Even Mahomes, what? Were the Chiefs down this year? What, eight and nine for Kansas City? That just doesn't usually happen. For the rest of the awards, looking for some Patriots. We have Matt Judon, Linebacker of the Year. Congratulations to him. And we are now shifting all of our focus. Like, KC's not here. This could be our window. Massive matchup in the wildcard round. Bitter rivalry game. Patriots, Dolphins. We handle business 34-20. Going to the divisional round for the second straight season under Aaron Rodgers and DeAndre Hopkins. Now Justin Herbert. I don't even know if they have Justin Herbert, but the Chargers standing away. What the fuck? How'd they beat us? How'd they, not only did they beat us, how'd they, like, kick our ass? This guy. What? Oh, it's Austin. Okay. I can handle getting getting spanked by Austin Eckler, at least. Well, we got one more year to go. And in closing, the Commanders. Wow. Wow. You know, I don't even want to talk about who their quarterback is. Oh, my God. Mac Jones got a Super Bowl before the... Carrying on. Uh, no one doesn't matter who won the Super Bowl this year. Looking at our squad, DeAndre Hopkins goes up to a superstar. No one else went down or regressed, which is a win on the offensive side. Kirkland, our great rookie wide receiver, uh, only a star dev. There was a chance maybe that was going to be something a little bit better. Christian Wilkins goes from star up to a superstar. Josh Uche goes from star up to a superstar. I don't think there's any other dev traits. And really looking at our roster, Tavai's hitting free agency. We're going to be looking at a new middle linebacker. I think everything else, this team is going to be ready to run it back.
A complete wet fart in free agency in terms of looking for an upgrade at linebacker with Tavai being the, the top option there. Brutal. So they do the right thing by a Patriot legend, and we just bring back David Andrews and go to the draft for our linebacker. And for the linebackers, I was going to be aggressive if I had to, to come up and trade for whoever we thought was the top linebacker in the class. But the best guys look like they were both second round picks. So we're going to have to decipher who do you think the best. We have TJ Towns out of Georgia, 6'1", 245. B block said A pursuit. Don't know his coverage, but he's a hell of an athlete. Elite speed, elite change of direction, which that way is pretty good. Not much at the middle linebacker spot. But here we have Marcus Phillips, a run stuffer, 6'3". 235 at a Notre Dame. We at least have the coverage. B zone, B block shed, combine is also pretty good. Has elite speed, elite change of direction. So I think all things equal. The last time we went to Georgia player, which was our Georgia linebacker last draft, didn't work out. So let's try Notre Dame, see if we can get the hidden dev roll. That's exactly what we get. Marcus Phillips, welcome as a day one starter for the eventual Super Bowl champion Patriots. The draft recap, 75 for Marcus Phillips, not bad, not bad at all. Out of curiosity, so he's 75 in depth, what was the top? Like equal to the guy that was the first linebacker, different players, obviously he's a speed rusher. But I do want to see TJ Towns, who's the other guy that we were considering, left outside linebacker. I'd say they're probably fairly similar. 74 for TJ Towns, going to the Philadelphia Eagles. So I don't think we're neither, you know, ahead or behind on the draft pick. Both those guys look like solid players. This guy's one overall point better, so we'll take that. Dolphins, man, we go 13-4, and four, which is like 95% of the time good enough for a first-round buy. The Dolphins go 13-4. and four. What a pain in our ass. And it looks like Patrick Mahomes is good. Like, that's my worry. Last year, everything lined up to not play the Chiefs. We literally said things would go well. We don't have to play the Chiefs. Looks like we're, at some point, probably going to have to play the Chiefs this year. Uh, but you know what? I guess, you know, we're going to earn it if we're going to be able to find a way to win a Super Bowl. Here in the final year of Aaron Rodgers, DeAndre Hopkins on the Patriots. 4,600 yards, 34 touchdowns for Aaron Rodgers. A little bit better than he was last year. 1,013 for Ramondre Stevenson. DeAndre Hopkins, outstanding year. 88 catches, almost 1,400 yards and 10 touchdowns. 9-4 and four for Juju. 9-10 and 10 for Kirkland. Defensively, 100 tackles, you want. Bentley, the sacks are down a little bit. Would have liked to see where they were last year at that level. But Judon with 10 sacks, 9 from Keon White, 6.5 for Barrymore. Four picks, John the Joes, four picks, Christian Gonzalez. <laughs> Very good numbers. But let's see. Rudolph, not Jalen Hurts. Oh, I can't wait for the new bad name. Just from the new contracts. That'd be cool seeing guys. Uh, Tyreek Hill. Really weird. I'm not going to say weird, but it's not easy for a wide receiver to win Offensive Player of the Year. For some Patriots as we burn through here. I got to know. Now I just had a curiosity. What did Tyreek do? Did Mr. Tyreek Oh, my God. I guarantee he had, like, what, 20 touchdowns? 1,800 yards, 23. He puts up a Cooper Cup-type sim stat line. They didn't even have, they don't even have Jalen Waddell anymore. And it just doesn't matter. Doesn't matter whatsoever. So it is now time to put up or shut up. The number five offense, number one defense here in New England. Going against the number five offense, number 11 defense in LA. Honestly, I don't know. I feel it's a revenge game. They knocked us out last year. They got pretty good players, but I don't think they have better players. That's another just, we're running the gauntlet here. We got Cincy in the next round. Let's see if Kansas City got bumped. No, of course. Um... Pretty much would have to be, you know, if we have to go and beat the Chargers, the Bengals, and I guess the Dolphins for this sim, but or the Chiefs, that, like that's as tough as our role you can get in the AFC side of things here. But Aaron Rodgers, look at that, man. He's playing his guts out. He knows this is the last hurrah. 400 yards, four touchdowns for A.A. Ron. All right, Joe Burrow, Aaron Rodgers. Battling it out, 13-4 and four Patriots, 11-win Bengals. Bengals usually aren't that good of a sim team, though, and luckily we use that and we don't have to play the Chiefs. Maybe more pressure could be put on us because we're going to have to defeat the divisional rival Dolphins as they knocked off the Chiefs 27-24. We handled business. Close game. 14 points in the fourth quarter was huge for the Patriots. Classic clutch time. Maybe two interceptions by Joe Burrow cost them. But Aaron Rodgers plays a clean game, and we're going to hop in here in the AFC Championship game against... Who's on the other side? Oh my God, imagine. 
If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Because if they're going up against the one seed, Vikings are crushing. But just imagine a Packers Patriots Super Bowl final. But we can't start thinking that far ahead. We got to handle business this week in the championship game against the one seed Dolphins. All right, on the road, I'll be honest, not shooting strays. Dolphin fans that are watching this, not the not the toughest home field advantage they go have to deal with in the NFL. Needs to be said. So it's not you know it's not the inverse. It's not like if Miami had to go to Gillette Stadium, Gillette. It's a pretty tough environment. Third and ten, need a big time play. Kirkland at the top of the screen. Kind of gets a little separation. Not the best throw. Had to adjust, but he gets behind. Man, you know what? That's probably why. Xavier Howard got to be, what, 30? He probably has like 86 speed. 86, 87 speed on the outside. You know, probably still has superstar ability. Can turn the turn the football with the best of them. But that'll be something that we're going to keep an eye on. Slow corners here for the Miami Dolphins. Go down the field. Patriots, it's going to be one of them games, isn't it? Feels like it might be one of those games. If I'm not hopping in helping them out, we're not going to be getting points. But there we go. Makes me eat my own words there. They get a touchdown. Dolphins come right back and respond. Definitely feels like a little bit anything we can do, they can do. But we get the go-ahead score here ahead of halftime. Maybe even more points. Two touchdowns in the final three minutes. Miami does start the second half with a touchdown of their own. We kick the field goal. Ten-point lead. Seven-point lead now. Any points here would just be game over. Come on. It's Aaron Rodgers. We don't need it. There we go. 10-point lead. Whatever. Let them get the garbage time. Doesn't matter. We did what we had to do in a game. Mondre Stevenson going over 100 yards. Aaron Rodgers played very well. 345 yards. 69% completion. Nice. Three touchdowns. Who got those tutties? Who got the touchdowns? Hunter Henry with one. Two for Britton Kirkland. Obviously, we saw one of those. And the Patriots are going to the Super Bowl. Awaiting the winner of the Vikings- and Packers. Holy shit, it is Green Bay. What? Packers got the 14th offense, 29th defense. How did they get this far? They beat the Vikings. They kicked the shit out of the Vikings. 45-35. Will Levis is their quarterback. They just ran the football really well, I guess. Quick scouting report. They got Christian Watson. They got Mike Williams. Aaron Jones still. Defensively, Devondre Campbell, Rashawn Gary, Kenny Clark's playing at a high level, but this should be a layup. Pretty much written in the stars at this point. Aaron Rodgers and the Patriots. Will Levis and the Packers. Super Bowl on the line. Aaron Rodgers looking for his second ring. Looking for, I don't even know, I've lost count how many rings the Patriots have, but that's a great start up. 10 zip. Patriots do give up a touchdown, but we score our own touchdown. We punish them with a turnover. And this is, geez, we're getting for, with early pay. I actually would like to see some points there off that last turnover. But it looks like we're getting like an average starting field position in this game on the 30. And when you look at the fact they have the 29th ranked defense in the NFL, I don't know how Will Levis and company were able to get them to this point. But we are signing them because we are a very good squad. We're like a 91 offense, 91 defense. Top 10 unit on both sides of the football. And there you go, man. That's all we needed to see. Expect I actually didn't think we were going to win a Super Bowl. I know the Patriots have a pretty good playbook, but I was expecting there to be a certain ceiling that we hit with this offense, a ceiling that we hit with Aaron Rodgers, a ceiling that we hit with... I, I was just worried that Aaron Rodgers would start to regress and DeAndre Hopkins would start to regress at the same time. Obviously, if this move ever happened, you know, there'd be a very now small window for the Patriots versus saying, trying to remain optimistic with Mac Jones as your quarterback. And even if the Patriots go in and get DeAndre Hopkins, same could be said. Obviously, you're going to hope that that can elevate Mac Jones. Maybe be the missing piece. You know, Bill O'Brien gets the offense going there with you know a lot of Ramondre Stevenson, a lot of Juju, a lot of DeAndre Hopkins to help out Mac Jones. But your window is still pretty small if you make that move to get DeAndre Hopkins. And I, I feel like there's a good, good, you know, ceiling of three years to try to achieve a Super Bowl. And luckily, we were able to hit it here on year three. Huge game, Aaron Rodgers. Give him the Super Bowl MVP. Clearly, look at DeAndre Hopkins. Five catches, 126 yards, but 396 and three tutties for Aaron Rodgers as he wins a Super Bowl. So mission accomplished. So that'll do it for here on today, fellas. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, do I have plans for more rebuilds coming? Like, obviously, right now we have the 1994 mod with the Dolphins, which... In turn now, we're actually getting ready for an expansion draft. I'm really excited to actually record that 
I'm picking at it this weekend. I'm hoping that I can have that up to you guys on Sunday. Uh, but it's my daughter's second birthday on Friday, so we're doing a little bit of birthday stuff this weekend. So don't hold me to it, but I'm going to try my best. Um, we also obviously have the Cleveland Browns rebuild, but that's you know that's going to be over sooner than later. It's not something that's going to be a super long series. But I was kind of just looking around at like different series that we could do, and I, I saw uh, Six Rings of Steel. He's like an NBA rebuild guy. He's on realistic rebuild, so I was like, oh, he done he done my my little uh, my little niche here. He did something where it was like uh, zero rings. To 18 rings it's like obviously that's that just basically no super bowls to six super bowls is the series that i'm thinking there's a bunch of teams titans bengals browns lions texans jags chargers vikings bills panthers falcons cardinals all those teams don't have any super bowls so i think a cool rebuild will be rebuilding those teams until we get six super bowls make until we get them to have the most super bowls any franchise has ever had i think that's something that's kind of cool that i want to explore i don't know if i have enough time to do all those teams but it's something that I want to utilize just a little bit, just so I'm not going super all in on just the retro content. I want to do a little bit of modern Madden stuff. So that stuff will be coming to you guys sooner than later. And if you didn't know, we're getting some franchise news next week. I'll be able to react to that a little bit. So uh, lots of good stuff coming on the horizon. So with that, all that being said, if it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button if you enjoyed. Until next time, it's your boy C4. Say peace out. Love you. Have a good one.